Shalom. We are continuing the series of understanding Hebrew verb structure. We are working in the imperfect tense. You remember that the imperfect or future tense of the verbs is indicated principally by prefixes, and some of them also have suffixes. This is a chart of those. Today we're going to talk about the hefil binyan, starting with this root, which we have been using, bet dalid lamed, and the hefil that means to divide. In the present tense, you recall that the hefil has a mem prefix and also a yud infix. So the present tense is mavdil. In the future tense, we see all the same prefixes and suffixes and the yud infix. So we have this form, I will separate of deal, you tav deal, and so on. From Ezra 8.24, we see this first person conjugation. It does have a injunctive hey at the end. The avdila misare hakohanim shnei masar. So Ezra is picking out from, from the priest 12 of them, they're going to get a special assignment. In Deuteronomy 19.2, we see the, the second person, a command given to Moses concerning the cities of refuge. Shalosh arim tavdilach. Three cities you will divide out for yourself. Separate them out. They're going to be the cities of refuge. In the third person singular, Leviticus 5.8, this is talking about when... There are the small birds that are involved in the sacrifice and how you wring off the head, but they are commanded not to divide the body, not to separate the body. And we, so we see that part of the command at the end of the verse, lo yavdil, he, the priest, will not divide it. In Nehemiah, Nehemiah 13.3, we see the plural third person. The people have been listening to the Torah. Kisham Am et Torah, and it happened when they heard the Torah. V'yavdilu Chol Arev Mi Yisrael. What have they heard? They have just heard that no Moabite or Ammonite come into the assembly, and so they divided all the mixture, the mixed ones from Israel because the people had been in exile that they had intermarried. So they divided those intermarried from the ones who had married only among the Israelites. Again, we have these five general cases that have their own peculiarities, but they're quite regular inside themselves. And we'll start with a Lamed Ayin verb, Shemem Ayin, which in the Pala means to hear, but in the he feel as a causative form, it means to proclaim or to let the news be known. From Isaiah 42.9, the Father is saying, Former things have come to pass, and new things I declare. Beterem titzmachna ashmiya etchem. Before they spring forth, I make it known. I make it known to you. So remember that verbs that end in ayin will tend to have an extra vowel under the ayin, and that's what we see here, ashmiya, one extra vowel. In Isaiah 2.2, 2, we see the third person, singular, speaking of the servant of the Lord. Lo yitzak, he will not cry out. Lo yisa, he will not raise up, indicating his voice. Lo yashmiya, bachutz kolo, he will not cause his voice to be heard outside or maybe generally in the street. In Joshua 6.10, we see the people are about to put into effect this plan for the destruction of Jericho, and Joshua gives them this instruction, lo tariu, do not make a loud noise, velo tashmiu et kochem, and do not cause your voice to be heard. Don't make any noise, no shouting, until I say so. In Nehemiah 8.15, here is the third person plural. Again, the people have been listening to the Torah, and they have just rediscovered Sukkot, and so they are commanded that they should announce and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem about the rules for Sukkot. So we have this Va'asher Yashmiu, they should announce, they should make it known via Aviru Kol, 
Again, this is also a he feel, cause to carry, that their voice would be carried in all of their cities, Bechol Arehem. Next, moving on to what we would call a drop letter imperfect. You remember when we had these in the participle tense, that this yud becomes a cholem vav. We'll see the same thing in the future. So the pa'al meaning of the root, yatsa is to go out. The hefil meaning is to cause to go out or to bring out. Moses is talking to Elohim, and he says, Mi anochi, who am I, ki ilech el paro, that I will go to Pharaoh, v'chi otzi et b'nei Yisrael mi Mitzrayim, that I will bring out the children of Israel from Egypt. In Exodus 12:46, speaking of the lamb to be roasted on that night, that none of it should be brought out from the house. In one house it will be eaten. This is a nifal form. Do not bring out from the house. It's a command to you. You do not bring, you will not bring out from the house of that meat. In Psalm 25, 15, the third person singular, Enai tamid el Adonai. My eyes are always towards Yehovah. Ki hu yotzi me reshet raglai. For he has taken my feet out of the net. In Jeremiah 17, 22, the prophet is trying to encourage the people to keep the rules of Shabbat. They don't carry any burden out of their house. The lo totsiu. Do not bring out masamid batechem v'yom ha-shabbat. Uh, any burden from your house on the day of Shabbat. In Leviticus 24, 23, speaking of the man who had blasphemed, whose mother was an Israelite and his father was an Egyptian, and they were deciding what to do with him. The father gives several instructions, and the last piece of the instruction, Moses relates, V'yedaber Moshe ad b'nei Yisrael, and Moses spoke to the children of Israel, V'yotziyu et hamekalel el chutz l'machane, and they brought out the blasphemer to outside of the camp, and there they stoned him. Looking at a hollow verb, ad bet aleph, in the pa'al, to come, in the hefil, to bring. So if you remember, in the present tense, what happens is, that the vav is gone and that yud infix takes its place. So the present tense he will bring is ma vi. We see similar formation in the uh, imperfect tense here. In Exodus 11.1, 1, God is speaking to Moses and he says, Od nega echad avi al paro. One more plague I will bring on Pharaoh. In Genesis 6, 19, speaking of the uh, how the animals are coming on the ark, Noah gets an instruction, Shnayim Mikol Tavi El Al Hateva, two of each one you will bring onto the ark. In Leviticus 4, 32, speaking of the different offerings, uh, in the event that the sinner brings a lamb, the im Keves Yavi, Korbano, his sacrifice. So that is the conditional, if he bring, if he will bring, third person singular. In 1 Samuel 9, 7, Saul and his servant are out looking for the donkeys. They can't find them. Saul's about to, to give up hope and just go home. And the servant said, no, there, there's a, a man of God here. Maybe he can tell us where they are. And so Saul says to him, So behold, if we go, what will we bring to the man? So that navi is we will bring. Spelling, pronunciation is exactly the same as the word for prophet, but they come from two different roots. The word for prophet has its own root to prophesy, nun bet aleph. And this is the imperfect, we will, that's the nun, and then the root, as we have said, is bet vav aleph. In Genesis 42.20, here is Joseph telling his brothers, Ve'et achichem hakaton taviyu elai, and your young brother you will bring to me. Again, from the story of Joseph in Genesis 
Here come the Midianites. They pull Joseph up out of the pit. They pay 20 shekels of silver. Viyaviu et Yosef Mitzrayma. And they brought, conjugated in the imperfect, but read in the perfect because of the vav. Yaviu. They brought Joseph to Egypt. Here is a real prize. There's a feminine plural in Leviticus 7.30. Because the word yad is feminine, yada, his hands, the verb is conjugated in that fancy feminine form, tabi'ina, will bring the fire of Yehovah, etc. I really was going to do the hit pa'el with this, but I made an unfortunate discovery that I haven't done the hit pa'el perfect yet. So next time we will do that, we'll pick up the hit pa'el and cover both the perfect and imperfect. Until then, keep your eyes on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.